Welcome back to the Avery Ventures podcast powered by Mountain Ops. Get 20% off at checkout using the code FATKID at mountainops.com. Uh, today on the show, we have Kenton Carruth and Ryan Callahan from First Light. Uh, First Light's a hunting apparel company out of Ketchum, Idaho. And uh, in this episode, we kind of discuss their 2017 line. Arrow wool, for instance, is one of my favorite pieces. It's a poly merino blend that I don't think people uh, know enough about or I hear enough about because it's a, it's a really great product. I also wanted to know uh, why Kenton came out with uh, hunting shorts, but he's trying to blame it on Ryan. So anyways, great episode. Check it out. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. So, all right, guys, we're down here at the BHA rendezvous in, rendezvous in Missoula, and we're here with the boys from First Light, Kenton and Ryan. Ryan, Kenton, welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of discussions on Merino, Merino blends lately on Rockside, and uh, the Arrow Wool has been the uh, <clears throat> your guys' new kind of product premiere line from last year. And I don't think people have talked about enough or have enough knowledge on it. Can you guys kind of explain why you guys produced it? Why you guys went away? Not away, but came out with a blended Merino poly. Well, you know, it's funny because blended to a certain extent and probably deservedly so kind of can get a bad reputation because a lot of times when a company blends, it's not necessarily for to increase its performance. It's to save money, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So... What what we wanted to do, and I mean, like all of our stuff, we basically build it and figure out a price later. Like we, you know, build the nicest stuff we possibly can and and charge whatever we need to charge for it, you know. And with the arrow wool, basically, what we wanted to do was that create a uh, uh, a piece that had all the you know good attributes of merino, i.e. Um, Super quiet, super comfortable, doesn't smell. Um, but, you know, merino, uh, while it dries a lot faster than, say, a cotton or something, it doesn't dry as fast as synthetics. So what we wanted to do is basically, you know, cr- create something that had the best of everything. And with arrow wool, I think that we did. You know, we introduced uh, 35%, um, 375 treated uh, poly in it with uh, 65% super fine, 17.5 Mike wool, the nicest wool that we, you know, have used in all of our stuff. And basically what we did was create a piece that was one, way more durable than than pure Merino. And two was uh, it dries tested, literally, you know, third-party testing dries three to five times faster. Um, hmm. And uh, so, you know, it allowed us, to, allowed us to make the wool a little bit thinner. So it's a 150 um, weight in that. And... Um, you know, just have it last longer and 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 uh, and uh, um, be you know dry way faster. I, lighter for your pack. So yeah, yeah. There's a lighter thing that I <clears throat> always worry about is there. I tried out another brand that had came out with a, a blended merino a couple of years ago, and the two things I didn't like about it was it had a really bad chemical smell, mm-hmm. and yeah, I I didn't think that it kept the the stink away. So when you guys said you're coming out, I was kind of not a skeptic, but I was just like, huh, I wonder how this will work out. Well, I got it. It just smelled, didn't, didn't have quite the merino smell, had a little merino smell, but it didn't have any stink. I wore the one you guys, I first got from you, the camo, it was in camouflage pattern. I wore it on a 10 day bear hunt and then followed it by a six day bear hunt. I wore the shirt every day, zero stink. The biggest thing I want to say about the, the my difference between the pure merino, whether it be merino from first light or smart wool or whoever, I, I would tear one. One season, one shirt, basically. I wore that camouflage one a good month, probably. No tears. And then I wore just a standard one of your dark earth or whatever it's called all last fall as my underlayer, or my underlayer and no rips, no tears. Marina, you know, bring up a good point. Marie, it, it, you know, when you're building a merino garment, it's a little bit tricky because basically what, what you do is um, – the finer the merino, so basically, you know, you take a you you know you take a bunch of different strands of the merino and you measure the thickness, and it's measured in mics. You know, um, the thicker it is, the the less comfortable it is on your body. The upshot of it being thicker, i.e., like say a, a twenty point five mic, is that the staple length is longer, and it can make um, a little bit more durable of a garment. And that's why on on our four hundred weights that we use the. 20.5 just because it makes it stronger but you could if you wore that next to skin and got sweaty it would poke you and 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 just be super itchy and uncomfortable but the fact is is that 
while you need to make it in these shorter ones, so it's really tricky to make. The finer it gets, I should say, long story short, the finer it, the finer the wool gets, the more apt it is not to be super strong. So you've, you've got to fi- find that line. Then with the arrow wool, weaving in the synthetics allowed us to make just a way stronger garment. What was what was the breakdown to merino to to poly? Sixty five merino, thirty five uh, poly. Kakona uh, thirty seven point five. And your, you Kikona. know the stink thing was like our was. major. You know, we're like, oh boy, this is this better work because the I mean, as you know, man, the mental health you get from not just being totally disgusted with yourself at all times. <laughs> right. is Amen to that. A big part of it. Kakona itself, or I'm sorry, I keep going. It's 37.5 now, but that, when they first came out with that product, one of their big thrusts was the fact that the carbon technology actually does abate smell. But then Scent Block and Scent Locker got so after each other, they were like, I don't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Uh-huh. But it's very similar technology. So that in of itself also abates scent, you know. Right. Um, I'm not going to make any claims. And we didn't, well, we've done no what? research, but um, they have. And, you know, and that, like I said, originally that was one of the, one of the kind of the thrusts, but they're like, we don't want to go down that road. You I know, think those, part of it's the, the, the fabric itself is so efficient at moving that moisture sure. right. that it, you know, you're not allowing the bacteria to build up like Absolutely. a lot of other synthetics would. Yeah. So how, how do you think that it doesn't have that stinkiness to where the other one that I used did? Is it, there's a difference in the poly that you're using from 35, 37.5? For sure. So the, the, the 37 point, the 37.5, they basically treat it with uh, uh, ground up coconut shell. They use it various things, but it's basically a carbon treatment, right? And the idea with the carbon is, is that as soon as you start to get hot, it's physically pulling moisture away from your body to the outermost layer. It doesn't like to trap it like synthetics do. It'll trap moisture within the within the fire not within the fibers within the you know the knit or the or the weave and that's where they sit there and fester and get stinky whereas merino naturally does it through the keratin and then with 37.5 it also helps so they're kind of working in conjunction to get the moisture i mean literally even the vapor as soon as you start to get hot and your body starts to perspire even slightly it pulls it to the outer layer and it, it evaporates so is that in your catalog it says arrow wool delays the onset of sweat is that what you're Kind of, yes. That you, yeah, yeah. That's how it basically works because instead of like a synthetic needing you, you know, physical moisture to, to, to form on your body before it can transport to the outer layer, the 37.5, even like vapor, as soon as your body starts kind of putting off heat and there's an imbalance of heat between the inside and outside, it tries to move it away. They've done tons of studies on, you know, the 37.5. So that makes sense why it's not exactly as much because it's not the bacteria doesn't have time, like Ryan was saying, to build up and cause that smell. Right, and it keeps you cooler when you're when you're hot, like when you're putting out a hard effort next to your skin. If the the, the temperature next to your skin's hotter than the outer, you know, the 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 ambient ambient temperature, it's just start it starts to move it away <laughs> immediately. So I think the key thing is there's not, not all polys the same. Not all polys the same. Not all poly, not all nylon. There's, you know, you. it's amazing how many different, you know, when you go to like these various shows and you see all these different products, it's, it's, it's such a myriad of products that you have to choose from. It's really cool, but it's really kind of hard separating the wheat from the chafe. You know, there's a lot of people just, just trying to pawn off BS and then there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, working. Well, yeah, I mean, the Merino game is exactly the same we always say you know fantastic merino costs just as much as crap merino right so you, right. I mean, yeah. there's a huge education factor yeah yeah i think that's the whole point i want to get to is i've learned long ago because i was i love merino and i had several different kinds but i always came back to first light and smart wool for their softness mm-hmm. always came back that i had the red you know red ram all the right ibex and i can't think of who else i had but it just always gave me that little bit of itch Right, and you guys in Smart Well, whatever you guys did, kind of changed, changed the game for me. I mean, there's a lot of that goes into that too. You know, there's the super wash and how aggressive you want to get with removing kind of the scales, and you know, it's it's all kind of a balance, right? And 
I, I don't know. I think we found a pretty good balance of making something super comfortable and, and pretty durable, you know. That's, so as you move forward, is Merino, is it the blend going to take place or are you guys always going to sell Merino? Well, in the thicker stuff, we'll always probably sell pure Merino. But in the thinner layers, um, it's rapidly switching towards towards the uh, towards the arrow wool for sure. The thick stuff, you know, Merino by itself's got plenty of, you know, it's probably a little bit warmer. It, uh, it, you know, it, there's just in the thick stuff. I think you know, meaning that in the weights above, say, two hundred, um, it'll probably stay pure merino. But in the high, you know, stuff next to skin, purely next to skin, um, and the you know that stuff that you use for, you know, hot days and stuff, it's going to go to eventually. I think probably a blend. It's just it's a product of testing, you know. Yeah, being having the stuff in in the field in a lot of different conditions is, and then seeing what that lab actually says, you know. So, Wait a minute, yeah. are you guys saying that you guys test it in the field before you bring it to market? What? <laughs> what? Who would do, what is, Who would do that? That's come so on, crazy. <laughs> I, that's the one Sci-fi. thing that I know First Light's doing, and I know a lot of the companies that work on rocks. You test doing. it. You you yeah. had the arrow yeah, for a full year. year. We had. I had your. Un, I still have your prototype uncompadre jacket yeah. and uh that thing's like a war hammer dude it yeah. looks like dog shit it has, <laughs> it has burn holes in the back tanya's like you're not wearing that you're not wearing that jacket uh, he hung with aaron snyder he starts fires every five minutes so yeah. you get burn hole after burn right. hole but that jacket i just can't let it go man it's so lucky i just yes. keep wearing it over and over and over again the Should- arrow wool shirt that you wore was the one that we had in our first ad I, with the arrow, you know, we, right. we made it send it back. Right. We're like, this shirt's been to, and Aaron had had it in Tiburon, and, you know, you'd had it in uh, BC, Idaho, Western Washington, I think, something like that. But that shirt, literally the one in the ad, had been out, I don't know, 100 plus days before we even. Well, how what tipped me on to the durability of the arrow wool wasn't actually the shirt. It was your those gloves that I had. Right. The merino liners. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I had the merino liners and I you guys came out with the arable ones and he sent me a pair of your demo ones. Yeah. And I noticed after a month I would go I merino's merino. It's tough glove right. and I'm don't take mine off and I'm hard on equipment. But yeah. I noticed I don't have any holes in these merino arable gloves. Yeah. And I look at my shirt and I'm like, Well hell, I don't have any rips in this <laughs> shirt either and it kinda of dawned on me this right. stuff's a lot tougher than straight merino. I yeah. think if you can send a product to Aaron or Ryan or both and, and it gets through the two them yeah it, it's gonna be okay for anybody well, like was, anybody yeah. i'm convinced of that yeah. it is yes. um it's a big deal for us to test everything and we've had stuff that we've pulled off the market before it went to market. you know like this just ain't working you know what i mean right. and, and um yeah i mean it, the testing side of things doesn't make everything wine and roses for sure because we have a lot of hard conversations and right you know it's like well we got a lot a lot of cash, a lot of time in this direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Like, yeah, well, doesn't that's work. A hard decision. Doesn't work. We got to start over, and that's that, yeah. and that's that's good that it's still on the table at that point. Because I think yes. a lot of companies get close. Yeah. I'm not going to name any names. They get close, and they're like, "Well, you know, maybe we'll give it to the customer and see what they say." Yeah, which is wrong. Right. But companies do do that because I've had some of their product. But I know, you know, I've done some of your testing for you guys. I know Ryan Callahan. I know you're getting it before. I know you guys give it to Renell early and they beat it down. I'm sure there's other guys you give it to that know beat it down. So it's a product that you guys invested in and put the time to have the durability test and functionality test done to it. So it was funny. We have says a, a lot like, about the product. We have a cold weather hat now that has been in development for five years and we can't make it work. <laughs> It's the funniest thing. It's a right? what? We have this cold weather hat that's like we want this, you know, a perfect kind of cold weather hat that still, you know, kind of will work for, you know, warm, not warmish, but not really cold. And I swear it's been like five years and all of a sudden, you know, it's like, all right, let's put it in the catalog. And, I'll, you know, it's been in the catalog one time. We're like, Ixnay, this thing is a pile <laughs> of crap. Like, yeah. It's hard. It's hard, you know. It's, we had a guy come in the office and be like, oh. Did you guys find this down at the thrift shop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like, wait a minute. No way, really? $100 yeah. hat. Well, I didn't realize you had that, you know, I don't, I guess wasn't paying attention, but that Tundra. Well, yeah. 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 That's yes. going to be Tanya's new best friend. That thing is so <laughs> what, what did you yeah. call it? What's it called? Balaclava. Hmm. Balaclava. <laughs> Is that, is that hard to say? Like it's a great word. Oh, baklava is a snack. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a great word. Have you guys ever heard of the name? I was just doing a podcast with Randy Newberg. Took. 
Have you heard of yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Where is that out of? Canada. You put your hand down. You keep oh, sorry. the camera. <laughs> Canada. Every, that's what they call it, your toque. Well, my uncle was French Canadian, but he lived in Fargo, and he right. always called it a toque. And then I asked, you know, Newberg's from Minnesota. Yeah. He's like, never heard of it. <laughs> No way. <laughs> I swear. That's like, on the what? podcast. I mean, what? I've personally used that term a hundred times. I thought, yeah, I thought, well, maybe I'm just the stupid one of my uncles from Fargo. And you know, they're all crazy in Fargo. Yeah, right? so. That's they, hilarious. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one. No. All right. I want to Thanks keep, for humoring him. Yeah. Well, I'll give you guys yeah. the I can tell Kenton knew as soon as I said it. So, and I'm her right. Yeah. Yeah. Cal, you you, I, we've used that term. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 I just don't want to be the crazy one out nah. there saying toque. Toque. Hey. No. I call it a beanie hat. You're too gay. That's it. <laughs> okay. It's it's I don't know, I don't know where it came from, but I definitely listened to it. Uh, All right, another big topic that I hear a lot is your sawtooth hybrid jacket coming out. Yeah. Yep. People are always hesitant on that semi soft shell insulation, you know, piece. For sure. What was it created for? What is it supposed to do? All right. I, I you know, I got to say this is kind of of a gripe I have with like modern times, but I think so many people like modern. try to create their kits based on like numbers on the internet they're like well i'm gonna you know get this jacket it weighs you know 10 ounces it's gonna be perfect with this because it's light too you know and and at the end of the day you end up with uh with a something that doesn't do shit you know it's like right. it, it it might work well for one thing but it doesn't breathe well or this or that i mean for us and we spent literally i don't mean to, but we spent a lot of time outside like i don't know 200 300 days of a, a, a year probably average somebody's outside for a minimum of an hour to eight hours a day like right. and the thing is is what you what, what you need is is versatility trumps all right i mean if you're walking you know you might be walking flat and then all of a sudden you got to walk up a you know 20 degree pitch and you're going to be way more you know just put out a harder effort and the idea is that you want to be able to wear something without constantly transitioning like you know or if your backcountry scene is the same thing you know you don't want to have to keep taking stuff off and putting stuff on and taking stuff off so the idea behind that jacket was to create a jacket that really has a massive amount of versatility it's all 330 weight merino throughout the body and then in the front where you generally tend to get cold if it's windy if it's colder um it's 60 fill with a uh, a nylon, a thin nylon cover. So it cuts the wind. If you get hot, you unzip it and you open it up. But you don't have to even stop walking. You know what I mean? You just have to unzip it. If it gets cold, you zip it up, you put the hood on. But what it does, there's no merino. I mean, there's just pure merino on the back. So you got a backpack on 90% of the time. It's, you know, you're not going to, it, it, it doesn't need to be warm back there, you know. But the basic idea was, you know, so you've got nylon in the front, nylon in the arm. So it's far more durable, you know, if you've got to go through willows or whatever. But it makes it so it can be pretty damn cold outside. And all you, you know, if you have an arrow wool layer underneath and that, you know, you can, you know, you get, as long as you're moving, you know, and then, you know, you stop the glass. And if you've got a glass for five minutes, you zip it up, you put the hood on, but you still have your backpack on and everything. Then as soon as you start moving, you take it off. But, I guess I'm rambling here, but the idea was to have a piece that just had a, a large amount of versatility, a lot like the Chama hoodie, but in the next level of coldness. You know what I mean? Everything in the line has to do multiple jobs well, or yeah. else it's not going to be in the line. Right. Because we, you know, it it affects everything. Like, we don't, you don't need to have a giant closet full of stuff, Like. Right? build an efficient system. We have right. some options in there for people who run a little bit more to the hot side versus the cold side and vice versa. Uh, but it's going to be a very trim, efficient kit because everything does a lot of jobs. And the sawtooth does a lot of jobs. And you said, you know, it's kind of um, a soft shellish type thing. Mm -hmm. I, I never, ever wear soft shells in the backcountry because they mm -hmm. don't pack down for anything. They're bulky. Um, and they just don't do enough jobs. This to me is what I would say is a soft shell because it, it has a ton of versatility. It's packable. It's a backcountry piece as well Super as a front quiet. country piece. And it's quiet. But so this is kind of the piece you put on to where I do it all the time, you know, October, September, bear hunting in May. I always have a climb. So I throw that on, you know, with maybe a lano underneath it. 
exactly. start back hiking up the hill and I start unzip it, you know, kind of regulate your, your climb. Right. That. Yeah. Fully unzip it. And then, you know, you get to the top and put on the hood. I mean, that's your, if you're going to, if it's super cold and you're going to last for a long ass time, then, you know, of course you put something else on, but you know, it'll keep you warm for the next five minutes, 10 minutes till you start walking again, you know, you zip it up, you put the hood on, but you don't have to take your bino harness off, you don't have to take your backpack off, you know. I mean, our theory is we want minimal things that do a lot of things very well. And it's like it's like with any gear in the world, the the evolution of better gear is gear that does more stuff better. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like in cars, you know, it's like, you know, 30 years ago, you wanted a one-ton pickup and it would rattle your teeth out driving down the road. Now you get a one ton that drives like a car, you know, it's just, it does as things evolve and, and things get better and materials get better. Things just do more things really well. And that's what we really strive to do. You know, try to find out what's the best to make it so people can get the most basic functional kits. You know, I did, I definitely re- referred to that sawtooth as kind of like my cruising jacket, which it, be uh, merino t-shirt underneath and once i'm on top of the ridge and like in hunt mode even single digits phenomenal piece Does you it, know because it you can cruise and hunt and you're you're comfortable you're not going you're not dreading sitting down knowing that you're soaked right from sweat um and yeah it's a great like approach cruising jacket and like kenton said yeah you just peel the sucker open and I wear merino t-shirt underneath, and that's about it. Really? Yeah. Uh, what like how many different climates did you have it in the, in low season all the way through into November? Yeah. So uh, that was my big thing because I I truthfully didn't fully understand the piece either. You know, it, it was great from a technology development kind of pushing the bar mm-hmm. sort of thing, but I. I even when it was in my hands, I was wondering exactly how I was going to use the thing, right? Right. Um, so I just said, okay, I'm going to wear it every single day, no matter what. So I got, I ended up getting 40 days straight in the jacket, and that was, um, you know, high desert Idaho. Um, you know, typically super hot conditions. We took it up on Ford's goat hunt, um, which we got up to about 11,000 feet on that um, in a very short amount of mileage just straight up straight up and then uh up to bc and we got all the beautiful bc weather you could think of and then um you know montana late season uh knee-high snow (laughs) you know 10 degrees um and so yeah versatility is the thing but it's i was so ticked at the end of that bc hunt because i had a lot of clothes that I did not use, and I, right. you know, I just hate bringing up a bunch right. of excess. So that that's always it's always speculation, like on rock slide. If something comes out, they've never even put their hands on yeah. it, and the speculation's like, I could never use that. And I, how, how the hell do you know you couldn't use it? You've never seen it. Well, it's yeah. If somebody says, "Oh, that thing weighs," I'm not sure what it weighs, twenty ounce, whatever it weighs, and they say, "Well, for that kind of warmth, I could get a down sweater, or down puffy, right?" And it's like. Down breathes so bad, and I mean, then all you know, the only thing that breathes worse than down is treated down, right? <laughs> and it's like nobody ever brings that up. That's oh, a good point. That's I mean, a very good point. Trust me, down is kick ass in plenty of ways. Like you know, you can get an incredibly warm piece in an incredibly small area. It's light, but it doesn't breathe, right? And once if you sweat it out, you know, so which you can easily sweat out down, and you know, less easily, but. Plenty of sweaty people will sweat out treated down, you know, and only once it's wet, it's wet, right? And it clumps together. And it and doesn't work. You'll freeze. But tr- trust me, there's plenty of great uses for down, especially like glass and stuff like that. Nothing's going to work better. But what, what, what I'm saying is that a lot of people are like, why would I get that when I could get this piece for, you know, two thirds of the weight that's way lighter? And it's like, because if you hiked and, you know, went for a long hike and you're down sweater, you're going to be sweating bolts and that thing all of a sudden is a, it's, it's done for the rest of the trip if it's a wet right. trip, you know. I never understood the guys that do a lot of hiking with down jackets on. I mean, I, the, there is no hiking with down know. jackets yeah. on. Yeah. I, well, I see yeah. guys, I'll be like hunting and I'll run into somebody or I'll be sitting, uh, you know, glass and bears and so I'm on a Forest Service trail. Somebody hikes by, I saw a guy hike. First, I thought he was like a, you know, granola hiker, you know, yeah. Colorado or something. Then, 
<laughs> rolls by and he has a gun on his back. Yeah. I was like, he's got a down jacket on, man, well, and he's sweating his ass off. I mean, the only time, all right, so our clothing designer, he's a gnarly mountain climber. Like, he hasn't summited K2, but he's been to the final camp, I think, on two different occasions, right? Like, heavy, heavy stuff. And, like, you know, the guys that are going, like, the 8,000 meter jackets, right? It's so freaking cold that, you know, those guys will wear down just because there's really nothing else. It's freezing and they got to put out hard effort and it's weight. But yeah, to see a guy at 6,000 feet and just a full on <laughs> downy, you're just like, dude. Downy. And then once it's wet, like I said, was he sweated out or yeah. if it gets wet, it's done. That being said, there's very little, there's very few jackets that work as well if you know you're going to put out a hard effort, get to the top, and you're going to sit there and glass. I agree with Down, that. It, it, it's the best. You you know, you take it out, it's small, because you know it's going to be, you know, say if it's 32 and you're going to glass for, you know, three hours, even, it, you know it's going to be hot. It could be 70 later in the day, but even sitting still at, at, at 30 degrees, it's freaking cold, right, One, as soon as you mellow out. So right. having something like that, it's phenomenal. But, and you know you've got to carry the rest of the day because you're not going to be wearing anything but a thin base layer. So it's got its uses. But I think that people that, sp- you know, they kind of look at these numbers don't really realize that there's a whole lot more that goes into these pieces than numbers. Right. You know? And people, you know, there's still a ton of folks out there that don't understand Merino. Mm-hmm. A lot more folks that don't understand wool, And, you know, our stuff, there's definitely a leap of faith that goes into it. And you have to be like, okay, that, you know. I'm going to leave this piece, and if <laughs> it works, it's going to be great. If yeah. not, I'm going to be miserable. And I, people, once people go through that, they're like, oh, my gosh. You know, they they get a trim way down. Yeah. It's an efficient system. So Soft shells, though, I, I must say, i got to back up quick. If you're hunting, like, in Alaska or, or places where there's a lot of willows and it just clothing, be, clothing just beating country, soft shells are pretty nice. Because they're yeah. damn tough, right? You you could build a soft shell that can withstand a pretty savage beating. Whereas even you know, like a hard shell jacket, like you know, with a right. nice three three and a half layer with a fifty D, it's going to get beat up. Where you know, soft shells definitely can you know handle some abuse, and there can be damn quiet. On the uh, I want to put this out there. I'm not anti down. I love down. I'm a I'm a puffy slut, but there's a time and place, a toolbox, man. It's time and place yeah. for everything. Yeah. But on that hybrid jacket, would that take the place or would you take the place of the Chama with no. that jacket or is it? A full level warmer. Is it? it would, it's what you'd wear instead of the Labrador. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a big chunk warmer than the Chama. So if you had the, your Lano, that, and then your M Compadre, and then you wanted your Storm Tide or your Seek, that would be pretty, pretty damn good system right Solid. There. Like the system I wear, like on the hill or backcountry or obviously hunting, I'll wear the uh, uh, arrow wool, you know, the 150, the um, hybrid, and then I'll have a, um, I'll have a storm. I'll usually have a vapor in my backpack, um, and if it's if I if it's going to get really nasty, I'll take out the seek, you know. But where we are, usually it's not like, you know, it'll be an hour storm, you know, and then the vapor will get you through the. Nice. Vapor, no problem. That, that actually leads me into the next questions: Is the seek and the vapor storm light? Did I say that right? It's the vapor storm light, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. yep. The uh, I have not used the vapor storm light, but I have used the hell out of that seek. And I took it to Kodiak, Sitka deer hunting. It rained every day. North Idaho is always wet, even if it doesn't rain. The brush is just always damp. Yeah. And I I never took it off in November, and I went through vine maple, the alder, you know, just yeah. I really don't change my mind and try to sneak through it. I know my fat ass ain't going to sneak. Right. <laughs> so I just kind of plow. Right. And I didn't tear it. It did not leak. I, I'm, I did uh, other jackets I wore, including the storm tie. I leaked through the top. I had some Sitka leak through the, you know, the top. Yep. The, the seat. Like backpack strap style? Yeah. Yep. Okay. yeah backpack yeah, yeah. compression. So it just got, you know, you oh, take your shirt off and you're wet down. You know, you're wet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it goes, you're hiking, so it usually doesn't matter. But that seek, I would test it. I did not have one like seep through to get wet. So what what changed? What is the seat compared to the? I've never used a vapor, but what what's the difference? The seek is a three and a half layer for starters. Um, basically, with the seek, that our goal was to get a jacket that literally would take you all the way until you had to wear like a rubber heli hansen whatever you know to wear Mm -hmm. i mean like you know you're a fisherman whatever it's so damn wet it's unbelievable um 
we wanted to get that. I mean, basically as, as, as waterproof of a hard shell as we could possibly get with that jacket, you know? Um, so it's a three and a half layer. We played with various glue layups, different laminates. People don't realize with Kokona is that you can use. I think you mean 37.5. I'm sorry. Why do I do that? <laughs> uh, um, so with 37.5, you know, we can, we have our choice. We can use different laminates if we want and use different PUs. It's the, the coating is what makes it special, right? So with that jacket, we, you know, played with all kinds of different stuff. But basically the goal was while still keeping it as breathable as we could, because, you know, you'll find that a lot of people that they get these waterproof breathable jackets for the first time and they're like, they'll send it back. Uh, this has happened probably five times. And like, this jacket's not one bit waterproof. And we ask them, like, well, have you ever had a waterproof breathable jacket? And they're like, well, no. And it's like, well, it's quite breathable. And it's a hell of a lot more breathable than rubber, but it's still, people get sweaty from the inside out. Like, right. they don't realize that it's still, you know, it's not going to breathe anywhere near as good as a non laminate, right? Because it, it's built to not let water in. It's a damn miracle that it breathes as well as it can, but it still is you know, going to get that glad bag. If you put out that super hard effort and decide you're not going to transition to get to the top of the mountain, you get there, you're like, I'm soaked. Well, it's generally speaking, it's sweat. Um, but so that being said, when we were designing that jacket, that was the goal. Um, it to build just a super heavy duty, like pouring rain all day jacket, like leave the car. I mean, leave the truck, leave the tent and it's raining. And you know, you come back, it's probably going to be raining. That's a 3.5, 3.5 layer. And what, what, how does that compare to the Stormlight? The Stormlight is 2.5. So the Stormlight is basically a 20D fabric, uh, a laminate, and then a 37.5 on the back. And that's why they call it a two and a half layer. Does it have pit zips too? No. And we purposely did not put zips on that jacket because for that jacket, it was like a weight at all costs. Gotcha. Like that jacket is made to be in your backpack probably at all times, but, um, if you'll notice, we that jacket in conjunction with the uh, with the um, the the sixty grain not sixty gram non zip puffy, those two pieces together weigh um, about a pound and a half, mm. and it's a lot of warmth and a lot of waterproofness that you can you know for a pound and a half penalty to have in your pack in case you totally blow the weather call. So we really did want to make that the the vapor as light as we could it's still pretty damn durable right it you know we we felt like if we got any lighter it would turn into one of those like internet pieces to where somebody's <laughs> like yeah i've got this great you know piece it's the lightest thing in the world and then all of a sudden you know you walk through 100 yards of of, of alders and you look like you got attacked by piranhas right well i, I agree i appreciate that because i bought the yeah. helium jacket outdoor research yeah one trip one trip one right? trip yeah and, it may be eight ounces but uh, it's eight ounces i'll never take again yeah exactly <laughs> right well now it's six it's even lighter <laughs> but it? It, no i'm saying <laughs> it's, it's all gone <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thing is you know you got a fine line like you know we've had this conversation but you know you you go hiking you never leave the trail. If you're off the trail, something's probably gone wrong. You're hunting, you're off the trail in the first, you know, 100 meters, right? right. So you got to build stuff accordingly. But, you know, the only thing, only negatives I've gotten on the Seek is it's a three and a half layer jacket. Does not feel like any other three and a half layer jacket on the market. So I hand it to a sheep guide and they go, oh, I, you know, I don't know because it's light. Oh, yeah. they didn't think it'd be durable? Yeah. I can attest to you guys from my side. Yeah. I'm, and I, I jack up an anvil, man. I That thing is very tough. Yeah. It is, and it's it has pit zips. And that jacket's made to be, like like I said, like it's, you, you look at, you know, the forecast and you know it's going to suck. You put the jacket on, it's raining all day, and you come back <laughs> to the tent and it's raining. You know what I right. mean? Yeah. So it's got all kinds well, we of- We were on POW um, last week, uh, October- this past season, um, up there with uh, Ranella and the Meat Eater crew, and you know that's a lot of guys in the woods. And I mean, it was, you know, Steve loves misery, and <laughs> the, this the first two days up there were so <laughs> wet seriously. that you know, and at this point, everybody's wearing our stuff, and you know, it's nothing dries, right? Right, nothing could even come close to dry. And, you know, so after two days, I'm like, ooh, like, who's going to, who's going to start complaining? Right. Everybody was bone dry and it's, 
you know, it's God, you know, we were full on like, you know, you'd have a 10 foot diameter cedar tree on its side that you got to slither over the top of. <laughs> so you're just grinding all your stuff into the mud and the, in the pulp and, um, super wet. And yeah, I, I, I truly couldn't believe it because it, it's not, you know, those aren't conditions that anybody's truly coming up with fabrics for, because right. that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Right. So yeah, I, I was amazed. And I think people don't, if you live in Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, it's a whole different world than if, you know, Colorado, or sorry, Oregon coast, no Idaho, doubt. BC. No Prince doubt. Wales. And that was kind of to your point, you know, when we came out with the original storm, storm tight, um, it was a two and a half layer, kind of a beefier two and a half layer, good jacket, a great jacket for the Rockies, you know, but we'd have guys that went like like you said to like where it like is nasty and it was like you guys need to develop a jacket that's just more pissed that can deal with the nastiest of the nasty and that's why we split the storm tie because then we're like all right if we're going to make that jacket it's a 25 ounce jacket that's you know made for as bad as you can dish out then that allowed us to make a super lightweight rockies jacket and that's how that that's how that evolved I want to bring some up that wasn't actually in our questions I asked you before, but I noticed that one of the biggest bitches of your product was the zipper, and you guys fixed that issue. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, yeah, I can. We had, we wanted these, like I said, it goes back to, you know, you go to the shows and you check out all the different zippers and all the different stuff. This company called O-Reach had these, I don't want to throw anybody in the bus, but had these amazing medical zippers that were like, they're like, okay, they're tested for, you know, this, this, and that. We're like, all right, awesome, totally waterproof. But they just, didn't hold up. That being said, you know, just so everybody in the world knows they didn't already know, the zipper is the most difficult thing in a garment. You know, it's the most, it's the most uh, troublesome thing for a manufacturer, you know, and it's, we use the nice, you know, we use the nicest YKK zippers money can buy, but you still, even YKK is like, you know, you're going to plan on a one and a half percent failure with zippers. You're like, really? And like, I would say, you're telling me there's no zippers on like space suits for astronauts. Yeah. One and a half percent. Right. It's yeah. just whatever it is. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah. The guys can get sucked out of the zipper. suit. <laughs> the, but no, I'm not shitting you. It's like we buy the nicest zippers. Right. right. And that was one of those deals where we kind of had to manufacture, uh, whatever. I'm not, but it, it was the nicest zipper that it medical though. Mm -hmm. And, in retrospect, thinking back, it's like, how many times do they operate a zipper? Yeah. Well, right? It's yeah. like a body bag that <laughs> exactly. gets a zip, body bag. zipped yeah. closed yeah. once. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't so, know. Do they reuse those? I don't know. I think they might. Yeah, I don't know. That's In nice. our defense, it was a much more expensive zipper than the YKK. Well, the thing is, is I've had pretty much every clothing brand of the sun, and I've had zipper issues with all of them. Yeah. I, t I, I fixed the... Uh, Uncompadre I've had forever. Right. Prototype first came out. Eight bucks. I got a zipper sewed in it. There you go. I have another clothing company that I got a zipper fix, a jacket I really like. It was like nine dollars. So right. even when the zipper does fail, it's usually pretty functional and you can get it fixed for pretty damn cheap. Yeah. It's pretty funny how much time and effort, you know, you spend on gauges or gauges of zipper, or wire, you know, coil zipper. Like it's 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 uh it's a, we spent a lot of time talking about <laughs> stupid put a shit. Zipper like they do in Kafaru Mystery Ranch, you know, it's like that wide and seven yeah. pound zipper. Exactly. On the <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You could rip off the tab and use it as a spoon. <laughs> yep. uh, people yep. do. It's like you know, you then then you put a beefy zipper. It's like the zipper is too loud, and you're like, Dios mio! I mean, I'm trying to help you out here. Like, what do you want? It's you like know? a six ounce jacket, but in a seven ounce zipper. Yeah. The zippers oh, are, uh, yeah, funny. they are heavy and they are troublesome. And like, so yeah, with the with the vapor, we were just like, you know what? We're gonna keep this jacket light, and people complain, and and then people say it's you know should be lighter, should have pit zips, and it's kind of like you just got to make what you know works well after testing it, you know. And I don't know. Well, I appreciate that because I think you can go too light, so it's probably a good yeah. trade-off right there. You'll notice we don't make vapor pants because the pants take so much more abuse that we're just like, we can't make a 20D pant, you know? It, that would be like the, your classic internet pant. Like, 
introducing the new vapor lightest pants in the world. Best ever. You know, or something. And all of a sudden Perfect the for the golf course. <laughs> yeah, right. You golf, you'll love these. But uh, it's, I mean, it's like, yeah. You, yeah. On You guys tested the uh, Seek, right? That's when you did the independent test with the other companies? Yeah. And you can find that on your guys' website still? Yep, yep, And yep. you also did that dryness test on the uh, arrow wool too. Yep. Against other merinos out there. Yep. Gotcha. So you check that out at firstlight.com. Yep. All right. Let's move on to some pants, the obsidian pants. I know they're coming out. They're gonna. Are they going to replace the canabs? No, the, the, the obsidians are basically the canab 3.0. 3.0. Can you tell us the features, function, and why? Yeah. They are um, – we just basically went and re kind of designed the cut. We moved the pockets a little bit. We just basically, they're basically a fine tuned canab. You know, we went through and discussed all the things that people liked, that people disliked with the canab, the fit, everything. They're pretty similar as far as like the profile that they fit. They just fit better. You know, they're more articulated. The stretchy stuff is in kind of a better spot. I don't know. It's just a better version of the The Canab is the most researched pant on the planet, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, it, the R&D that has gone into that thing, because it's a magical material. Like, it, you are comfortable in every temperature range, period. The issues that we would face was durability specifically for guys that aren't built like Kenton and I. Yeah. <laughs> or guys that would stuff a bunch of stuff in their pockets, and they'd be packing an animal out, and all of a sudden their pants... Start getting a sag, and you know, and then all of a sudden they've got to you know step over. They're sweaty. They've got the GPS, Lord, you know everything, and then it's just the sum of all fears. Then you step over, and your pants are down to here, and they blow up. Yeah. yeah. So if you had that actual was... quads and actual butt, you're, you know, eventually <laughs> you'd probably blow up those canabs. I had trouble. You probably shouldn't buy those. Anymore. I already yeah. had trouble with the canabs. Well, <laughs> so the, I realize the even the canab two point are actually. Canab, that was like the fourth gen of the canabs. Those are the ones with the corrugate guide material in the crotch. Yes, and yes, the, yes. And they 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 represented a huge step up. You know, those things got like our returns as far as guys blowing up went almost How, to zero. What like is that, is that staying the same in the city in that crotch yes, in the middle? Yes, it is, but just moved around a little bit. So there's not even really any pressure points. You know, what is the difference in that wool compared to you guys in like merino? So base layers. Th- that stuff is it's a it's a weave for instance it's not a knit you know so it's uh-huh. like, you know it'd be like the difference between a t-shirt or a pair of jeans you know jeans are woven and t-shirts are 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 knits but basically on the new one we went with 10% more uh nylon on the new canabs so they've changed a little we got a lot more strength out of the new canabs than the i mean the new obsidians um so they're kind of a are they am I hearing that right? They're kind of blended in there or no? Yes. Okay. But you can't even tell. Like if I didn't gotcha. say you they, they it looks and feels exactly the same. But they just have uh, they're just a little bit more durable. And then, you know, in certain places where there are pressure points or whatever, we just it's just I don't know, it's just a more evolved. Made them more canab. functional for the short fat guy with big legs. Exactly. Yes. And I a lot for tall sizes now and those, which we did before. But it is um, an incredible pant. It is our number one selling item year to year and people get like you know people be like oh, i'm gonna buy five of these in case they go away and wow. they're 180 dollars pair of pants the the thing is man you can wear them inside your sleeping bag on a plane on top of a mountain yeah uh underneath your waders they're durable it, it just it's comfort I switched comfort, back man. to the obsidians after two or three years with the corrugates. See, me and Tanya's favorite pants are the corrugates. Yeah. So. I love them. I yeah. love the stretch, but just the way the new the new the, the obsidians are built, they just feel that kind of stretch. Like when Do you they? put them on Yeah, they once you get used to the stretch of the of the corrugates, it's hard to go back. But these pants kind of have that feel just by the strategic placing that, you know, we have all the stretch uh in the crotch and the butt and the way that there's none in the knees, but the knees are, you know, have ergonomic gussets, and they just feel good. I don't know. Plus, they're just so quiet, you know. They're that being quiet. said, that being said, for where you guys are, where it's just gnarly, they'd still probably get, you know, if there's prickers and stuff like that. And, like, you know, obviously, yeah. like, heavy dew, right? That's what I, like, yeah. yeah, that's the only – I mean, when I'm wearing the corrugates nonstop, it's yeah. when I know it's going to be wet. 
Yeah. The mm. Corg- well, I feel like a, the Beverly Hill Ninja in the Corrigates. I really yeah. do. I feel like I could just kick somebody in the face. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually tried. I do a roundhouse. He tries to do a roundhouse <laughs> you know, kick just to me test him. In my basement, Corrigates on, doing roundhouses with no shirt on. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Please let me do Kung that. Fu Panda. <laughs> he, does, yeah. he, he starts out with a few squats. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda is about right. Yeah, I kind of get down in he, the squat and say, damn, yeah. these are stretchy. Yeah, damn, like, these are stretchy. Love these. These are so good. And he I, squats a few times. He's like, I could just kick you right in the head right I now. I was like, Ken- and I, I'm like, do it. Let's see it. Come yeah, on. yeah. Kenton was it thinking about me when they designed these things. No, those pants, people don't really realize it. Those, it. those pants represented a pretty big jump in technology because um, it's really, you know, a lot of fabrics are difficult to print on. Nylons being one of them, right? So most of the, and if you'll notice, like most high-end pants, um, certainly from, say, you know, Arcteryx or Marmot, like trekking pants are nylon. Their 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 B tiers pants would be poly just because it's less expensive to manufacture, you know. But all of the hunting pants prior to those pants, I'm not gonna say all because there might be some esoteric, you know. I I had that'll seen come back it. to haunt you. Yeah, you yeah. said all, yeah. Kenton, uh, liar. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we had not seen stretchy nylon pants primarily because it's difficult to print on with paper because right. nylon sensitive to heat. But once we figured out how to print on those pants. Um, it was cool. We were like the first guys to bring like a A level pant to the hunting side, you know. And call me crazy about those pants, but I may joke around, but I I hunt a lot and I I'm always wet. Where I hunt, I'm always wet, and they do dry faster than poly. I don't know the numbers on it. Yeah. But to me, they are faster drying pant than the polyester pants I had worn before. Well, they I, they I, should. I, I, I mean, it it that pant is treated with the thirty seven five. So it's, you're going to have some enhanced breathability, and I think just because of that efficient moisture mitigation, you're you're probably going to see them dry faster. And they, you know, that all the synthetics just dry pretty damn fast, you know, and and um, so. Well, I always know. seemed like I was worried about it. I'd throw them somewhere, I, like, yeah. whether I was wall tent or backpacking. Yeah. And I'd throw it in my sleeping bag or I'd throw it in the corner of the wall tent, not really hang them up. And then the next day I'd grab them. Damn, they were dry. And I don't always get that with the polyester pants. So okay. Well, here's my opinion. With nylon, what nylon affords you is nylon's so much stronger than poly that when you build like a pair of pants like that, you the weave doesn't have to be nearly as tight to get them strong. Mm-hmm. So that's why they breathe significantly better, right? Because when you do it, you're, you don't have this really tight weave in order to gain durability. You're allowed to, you know, you've got, you've got the flexibility to make them um, far more breathable. So, you know, I, 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 we've done internal testing and that's what we found. But I, I'm like at this point now, after everybody says what their stuff does, I'm not, I don't even want to, th- Unless I send something to a third-party tester, I'm not going to say anything because it's like um, it, 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 all of a sudden I get lumped in with somebody that just bullshits all the time, you know. And yeah. I, I'm like, I'm, you know, if I'll, I'll spend the five hundred dollars to test it if I need to, and um, it's waterproof and breathability, you know. And then I'll state what it does. But right. like, I'm pretty loath to, you know, I got to be. I got to take the high ground, you know? Right. Now that, yeah, that's not your guy. That's my opinion. But that just yeah. stuff always seems to be dry. When I go right. back to use it, it's dry. I walk around after I got out of the brush, it's a dry. And it just seems, that's why I like those pants and use them over and over again. Cool. All right. I just saw this thread this morning on Rockslide and they were talking about your shorts. They want to buy them. Uh, who the hell decided to make shorts and what's the function for them? I think... <laughs> Every, like I was probably the, and it's funny you called me up, but I was the last guy. <laughs> Everybody in the office was like, "I want shorts." You know, when it comes time to go shed hunting or come, you know, for you know, go running and stuff like that, they just gotcha. wanted the shorts. And it's funny because they were expensive. You know, they're made. When you think about shorts, they're pretty much all that you know. Everything that's expensive, other than having that much material, which is the easiest. To make it's got one stitch and one stitch at the bottom, but all the pockets, all everything, you know. So it's it's amazing that shorts don't cost eighty percent as much as a pair of pants, you know, because right. at the end of the day, that that that's what they cost them to manufacture. But I don't know. Everybody just really wanted those durable shorts. They wanted the you know the 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 nylon Duraflex you know style shorts, whether you know for shooting your bow or or they're killer know. mountain biking shorts they, they totally I were see, i don't totally. i didn't see you ryan wearing i saw kenton wearing shorts i used to see you with the white legs like me out there yes. with shorts on. <laughs> very true very true you're so idaho are you like a non-short guy 
I wear shorts, but not as much. Short pants. I just yeah, short pants. Wear much, but when I saw them, I was like, God, that head that came out of the mine of Kenton Carew. <laughs> I had cowboy buddies that never wear, they never wear shorts. It could be 175 degrees. I'll take the shirt off. No, they don't want to expose their legs. <laughs> see, some people would rather see their legs than their bare chest. Yes. I'm, yeah, every time I take my I shirt have... off, somebody calls it a Bigfoot set. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking ridiculous. What are, the pan- what are those shorts made out of? They're basically corrugates. Are they? Very similar, yeah. So very durable, dry Super fast. Super dry nice fast, stuff. exactly. Yeah. And I mean, our, our tr- there's a lot of guys here at the Rendezvous that are Arizona folks, um, yeah. those wilderness athlete folks. They're... They're all like, oh, yeah, I want to get a pair of the shorts. Yeah. Because that's what I so, hunt in 90% of the time. And I yeah. always see it. I'm 95, 90, well, I'd say 90% of my hunting is wet environment. So I never get yeah. that yeah. way. And I got to get out of that. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't it. have to always wear them when you were hunting. You could wear them, you know, other times. Well, even if you hike around in the summer, you're, <clears throat> you go off trail, you're going to get just scratched the hell up if you had shorts. I'll tell on. you, I, I, I have hunted in California. I haven't hunted there probably. Six years. Why, why'd you but, have to say the c word? Sorry, but it's so freaking hot, man. It's crazy. You know, their big game season starts like the tenth of January, um, July or something like that, right? Really? Oh, and it's so crazy. I don't know. We, you know, what our, you and I consider hot is not, but you know, it'll be a hundred and five degrees, and you know, I would definitely wear them in that situation. You know. Oh, I'm I'm gonna buy a pair. Don't get yeah. me wrong, and I'm gonna send you a pair with my shirt off and just those. <laughs> I like it. Like, I want a about, small I want video it. of him trying to do a roundhouse yeah, kick. Some karate I want it in the catalog. <laughs> <laughs> on the cover. <laughs> on the cover. Oh, awesome! All right. Well, that's why the guide shorts are around. All right. Yeah. The, the unpronounceable or the uncompadre pants. Right. I see the need for those. Yes. 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 Yeah. Those pants. It's funny because Cal's been pushing those pants for a while, and I was kind of like really like my legs are never cold and i didn't realize till i wore them last year that my legs were always cold you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know we'd sit there you know certainly when we went to alberta and it's it's humid and cold and you're on glass for three hours you know from and you're sitting there for an hour before the sun comes up right and i was like as soon as i got those things like i wouldn't leave the house with them you're just so much you're just so much more comfortable. You're not wiggling right. around. You're just comfortable. And to be clear, because I saw a couple of threads that they're meant to be worn over your pants. Full on. So, yeah, I see somebody saying, how are those supposed to fit under my pants? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could, like, tree stand, stuff like that. Well, like tear-offs. You better have some big pants. <laughs> no, they, uh, uh, yeah, for sure under waders. It was freezing. Yeah. But over your pants, they're sweet to have at camp. They're definitely not made to hunt in. You know, it's a, they're thin. It's a 20 D, you know, we right. wanted to make them light cause you know, they're made to sit in glass. And like I said, then all of a sudden for the next, you know, 10 hours that day, they're in your backpack. So it's definitely a product. Some, there's a very small percentage of folks out there that are like, yes, of course. Yep. Yeah. And then everybody else, it, it gets, it gets, uh, kind of tough to make that transmit because everyone you talk to, I carried five pairs with me on every hunt that I went on to give to everybody Uh to get, uh, you know, get feedback, um, over the course of that hunt and all my legs don't get cold. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. No, no, you know, my legs don't get cold. Yeah. Well, just try these. And it's like, Oh my God. Yeah. Like it's just, it's another level of, and for me specifically like thinking mule deer and real steep country where, you know, you sneak into a spot and set up in glass you can't move after right. that because the deer are basically doing the exact same thing. So the more you can have on and be comfortable and the less movement you're making behind glass, you're going to, you know, hopefully find that buck before he's already found you because you're doing jumping jacks and push ups and crap on the side of the mountain trying to stay warm. Right. So but the thing about those pants is I stole the pair from Snyder and uh, I wore them in November in the snow. You don't realize you lose a lot of heat and your legs, and when you get up there and you're still sweating, you throw them on, you retain that heat for so long. Totally. Yeah. And I'd never realized that until I really started getting into the puffy pants. Well, I like yours because I don't like the down for the reason we talked about at that point in time. And I'm sitting in snow, you know, but the pot, butt's going to get wet. And I didn't really see any rain, snow, slush, sleet, any really leakage. I know they're not a waterproof pant, but yeah. they're definitely durable to be in a water environment. Yeah. 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 I, I've, 
certainly found the exact same thing. But yeah, it's when you think about, you know, just your body makeup, um, pelvis, femoral, femoral arteries, um, of course you're losing a lot of heat out of there, you know? So, and that's really where you feel it first. You're like, Oh, crotch is heating up a little. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tanya's, all, Tanya's just cold blooded and she will have a pair in her pack. Oh, all the yeah. Time. I, I never can imagine a world where I'm like, Oh, my legs don't get cold. Oh, my <laughs> arms don't. Oh. Everything's freaking cold. Always. I, All no, the freaking I, time. It's so funny. Cause I, I was this, I was the opposite. I was like, I, those pants, like, do we really need these pants until I wore them? And it's like, Oh, I really need those. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't know what you're missing to. And I, it's, and that goes back. To, I said before, I hate the word expert, but people like Ryan, people that get out there and me to a lesser extent, I don't probably get as much as Ryan or, you know, the guys in the industry, but you wear them and you're like, there is a reason to have these. And this is why. And yeah. then you explain that whole heat loss thing and that people that might click with somebody. And if you're really doing aerobic hunts, if you're really pushing it out there, um, you know, certainly you can ditch your long johns, right? So there's, there's no weight trade off at that point. Cause almost everybody's packing long johns if, right. to sleep That's in if point. nothing else. But, um, you know, my last couple of hunts, you know, real cold weather, um, the three quarter length arrow wool long johns that we make, though, I mean, that's as heavy as I'll probably go now, unless I get in the tree stand. We make fun of the Capri pants. <laughs> the Capri pants. But I got to say, they are, those kick ass. The deal is. Oh, is I just that, took mine off for the year. Is that. <laughs> I wear them all the time. April 1st. Yeah. Well, off with the Capris. With yeah, exactly. Most people are bringing the Capris out yeah. and you're taking them off. Along with the, <laughs> the wool socks, I mean, you really have a full pant. Well, and that's the deal. Yeah. What, how you get cold is that. The outer layer touches your skin, basically. Like I say, the corrugates or anything, you gotcha. know, the, it cools it down. Just having that barrier between your skin and the, your outer layer makes a huge difference mm-hmm. in staying warm. So, like, you know, you wear, say, I wear the compressions pretty much exclusively with those. Uh-huh. And um, you can put out a pretty damn hard effort in those three quarters before you're like, ah, I wish I didn't wear long johns. Whereas with long johns, you know pretty quick. You're like, oh, man, I wish I could take these long johns up. But I hardly ever wear long johns right. anyway. I mean, like unless I'm tree stand hunting or it's a flat hunt. With heat loss or retention, it's the little things that really matter. Yeah. And if you, gotta, you guys have a system for all different kinds of... I mean, what's the classic about? saying? If your feet get cold, put on a hat, right? Like, to your point, right? It's, oh, exactly. You, details you know, matter. Little yeah. details. Yeah. All right, everybody's talking about your cipher camouflage. I I love the fusion where I live, where I do most of my hunting. The fusion is the bomb. What was the reason behind the cipher? For guys that hunt, uh, spend more time in dry grass or sage. Simply, like basically, the the fusion was meant to be fifty fifty, like you know, equal time um, work well in a tree, work well in dark timber, um, and also be very passable and if you get caught out in the wide open you know whereas i'd say the the cypher is more like a 75 25 um it's made for 75 percent open we made it dark enough to where like say if you're elk hunting you, you know when you're, when you're elk hunting 90 percent of the time even if it's you're going to do your setups in timber right? right so it still needed to be plenty dark to where in the dark timber it wasn't too light but it also we wanted it for like antelope for deer, for guys like that are hunting in drier environments, you know, that are going to be in dry grass or for guys that are in a tree when all the leaves are gone. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Where it's like back sky is your background. So, um, yeah, it just kind of rounded it out for a lighter environments, but it's the same, pretty much technology, same. You know, I, I've strategy. heard this from like four people that have actually seen it in person, and myself included. So the fifth, I guess, but Jordan Bud was one that used them down in Mexico hunting sheep. Yeah, she's like, you just don't. This camo doesn't look like doesn't overwhelm you when you see it on a page. She's like, when you see it and in the environment, she says it's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. Her I'd, term, not mine. Really awesome. You That's know, one of those sales things, like, and uh, you know, I'll I'll just say it. Like underneath fluorescent lights, it's kind of got this like ultra yellowy hue to it but in natural light you're like oh it's right. fantastic yeah so i mean that's kind of a weird kind of box store th- thing that i'm kind of thinking on these days but it's, it's not you know it's not made for being inside you made want camo outside. to look everybody wants it to visually look good like i.e 
be like have a fashion sense. Right. But the, at the end of the day, that's not our bag, right? We want it to be like maximum functionality. You know what I mean? Like it work the best in the woods because, you know, if 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 it works the best, sooner or later you're gonna have two guys that go hunting and one dude's wearing it. And he's gonna be like, man, that camo works, and he's gonna tell his buddy. And you know what I mean? That's yeah. how you want it to get out there. Not necessarily like. Wow, that looks really cool. Well, where are you wearing it that you need to be worried that it looks cool? Like, church. are you wearing it shopping? <laughs> yeah. Walmart and no. church, all right? Oh, this is shit, no. <laughs> no, that's, no but... that's in Idaho, actually, Aaron Snyder was like, why is everybody wearing camo everywhere we go? Like, we'd go to the store to get Because he's a Colorado hippie. It, he didn't right. know. That's no, and, every, and it's true. Like, everybody's wearing camo everything, every time, all the, you yeah, know. It's no big no. thing. What did you call me yesterday? And it's true. A necker. A necker? <laughs> yeah, and I am. Because you're calling me a hippie. <laughs> Well, Ken, you, you keep up with the shorts. I don't care what you're telling me now. Ryan will confirm it later. Uh, you definitely not not a hip. I'm well, not a hipster. Yeah, hippie, hippie. Uh, but he's like, well, you're a necker, and I was like, what's a necker? <laughs> he's like a redneck. I was like, I can't argue. I can't argue that statement. I I am. I love it. But no, the cipher in person, out in the actual open environment, looks fantastic. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. So I think people that are on the fence should. Uh, jump in and I'll, I'll stick with fusion just because it matches up where i hunt better for sure if you're in an area like where you barely can see any you know grass that fusion kicks ass the lines truth i mean the lines are the most important part this the base science of, sure. of those patterns that is is where it's at right like if you want to you know get picky you can worry about your turkeys and waterfowls as far as color goes, but it's the openness of the cipher versus a slightly more condensed, um, a couple of different, uh, slight change in the algorithm, as our guy would say. But. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, Ryan's not good to admit it, but I have all the fusions. So when we go hunting together, we have to match for our hunting selfies. Right, of course. So, <laughs> of course. I mean, and that's really important. That's really the most important thing that he's not going to tell you. All right. Is yeah. I, Team Avery. Yeah. Right. We I don't mean, kill nothing. We got to look good in our selfies. Twin <laughs> when we're out in the woods. So he can't have the cipher until I get the cipher. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. So we'll see. That's, Makes sense to me. Right. She is a big fan. She has even all her backpacks in Fusion. The, I, I did, like Yeah, it. I like Yeah. So he has to keep his. So, Hopefully sorry. Hopefully we'll some backpacks in Cypher shortly. We're working on oh, that. That would be great. sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do like the looks of Cypher, and I've seen it in person, and it definitely, definitely changed my mind. I first thought, I was like, ah, I like Fusion, but Cypher, even though I hunt in a green, really green, ferny environment. Yeah. Cypher just looks cool. It, and it'll work fine. I mean, basically, we want it as light as we could, but light as we could, but still works good in the dark stuff. You know right. what I mean? It's not going to work as well uh, as as fusion, obviously, but, um, but but it's it's totally workable. Well, Jordan's article sold me on it when I was looking at her, all of her pictures, and she's in the desert. And she's a badass. She is a badass. Yeah, and uh, you can. I mean, it looks so good. I, I was super impressed. Yeah. Cool. Blended in really well. Yeah. And moving on to Jordan and Tanya, the woman's line. The women's line is no small undertaking, and it no. has to kind of be a pain in the ass at sometimes. You're not guaranteed sales either. You know, we, with the women's line, we did it, uh, introduced it just like we did the men's lines back in the day. We came out with uh, base layers first, the core pieces, and then we're built out from there. Every year it gets bigger and bigger, you know, and um, the line gets bigger and bigger, but... Uh, we, when we set out to do the women's line, it became super apparent that women wanted exactly what the men got, except with you know, except it needed to fit them better and, where possible, make things slightly warmer. Because you hear that a ton. Like women are like, "I'm just cold, man. I'm cold." So you know, we try to build in a little bit more warmth in everything. You know, unless it's something for super cold weather. I mean, uh, super hot weather. But uh, yeah, it's just it's getting bigger and bigger every year. Kenya is loves. I don't know the name of the women's line as much, but she always wears that hooded Artemis. Yeah, Artemis. The Artemis. Yeah. She wears it in the house, outside. I all mean, the time. to church. That's I mean, a I, nice piece. I don't hang out with the camel people, but <laughs> right. And your your green. I don't know the girls' camel color. That green color, right? The pictures do it no justice. I I don't like that color, but right. I do love the color that on 
Tanya. Right. Well, on the website, it looks like it's more blue. It Does really, it? yeah, what I is, think. What I thought is it, it called? Do you remember? Sage. 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 Yeah. And it, in person, it's more green. So people looking at it on the website thinking, oh, this, this isn't going to blend because it's so blue looking on the website. It's not that blue in person. And maybe if you look at people's actual hunting pictures, right. like Ryan's bear that he shot last year, that was actually my bear, but I'm not going to bring that up. Um, <clears throat> it looks, it, it does, I think, more justice in the pictures because it blends. I mean, I think this is like when he was wearing the sage on your bear, it did a lot for his eyes, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> it really brought out the blue in his eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, Which was you. important to us because, you know, we had it look good in our pictures. We right. got to be matching. Got it. But so. as of 2017, you guys have a full system yeah women now correct? full western system right yep we've got uh we've got uh the vapor we've got uh a puffy and yeah we're just oh that puffy looks sweet yeah and we're just building and for next year we'll build more and you know it's just um it's okay. funny you know we basically build i'm not basically i mean we sell pretty much all that we can make you know so we're always so for us to kind of make women's it, it, it it's always kind of a it's tricky because all of a sudden, what are we going to do? Take dollars that are made that we have to make stuff that we know we're going to sell out um, of other stuff. But, you know, it's also we just need to you constantly got to evolve. You know right. what I mean? And and for us, um, we just had a lot of women and maybe it's the vocal minority, but they wanted specific stuff. So and it's proven to be good business. And just yeah. an example of how the pieces would differ that puffy is a great one because you know aside from the women's fit the um men's puffy has no insulation in the armpits because we run a little bit hotter women's has insulation in the armpits men's hood is a little bit lighter in the hood 60 and the women's we stay at 100 yeah Yeah, and so that i mean that's really the only you know it's it is a bomb proof chunk of gear do not leave home without it. So. What's the girl's puffy's name? Uncle Bagre, isn't it? No. I don't know. Put me on the spot. I don't know. <laughs> Where's the catalog? Uh, no, it's. I did check that out, and I checked out the whole woman's line, and me and Tanya did a video on it at the SHOT Show. And the women, you hit the nail on the head, and Tanya is, the picture of that is, they are always cold. We sent always. out uh, hundreds of questionnaires. When we started the women's line, we were, mm-hmm. we sent them out to tons of different people and tried to get as much feedback. And that was definitely just a theme we heard over and over again. It's like, I'm always cold. Well, that's, I mean, I think it's really important. People say, oh, well, can't you just get a men's small? Well, sometimes, yeah, you can get a men's small. But what a lot of guys don't realize is there's so much space around your stomach because you're having to buy a bigger jacket. So then you lose a lot of heat because you're, totally. there's so much space. Right. And you got, I mean, you got to close the space to stay warm. So, you know, it's not that we want to look better in it or make sure it accentuates all the right places when we're hunting. It, no, you just have to close the space. That's really the most important part that a lot of people just really don't think about if they're not having to deal with it. Right. Yeah. Both so. for noise and heat retention. And, right. Yeah. All right, last question, 2018. Could you give us any previews, sneak peeks, anything coming out that you can talk about? Mm-hmm. I don't think so, yeah. You're not coming out with the greatest <laughs> thing ever in mankind? He is. Yeah. He's just not telling us. We have us. so we much found, We went to a different awesome planet, stuff. and we got some stuff <laughs> the, the that astronauts you won't person. believe. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> we got to put put the screws to it before we really start talking about it. Yeah, you know? we so have tested like, the stuff. Oh, well, we've got some time on some 2018 stuff. Last year we did. Yeah. So you're saying there are pieces coming. Yes. So I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> saying. I'm saying. There's I'm not out. saying. And then the last question I've been dying to ask you. Second last question. Kenton is, how come they call you Kenny? <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent My question. mom used to call it specifically because she knew it drove me crazy. <laughs> And then once my friends found out that my mom called me, and it it drove me crazy, that's just now it's my name. Because, you know, and and, and everybody found out that I loved it. Nobody would have called me it. (laughs) So this is not helping. No. I can't not think of South Park when I hear that. Oh, that That killed Kenny. That that made it even worse. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) 
Well, guys, yeah. I appreciate you coming on. Oh, man, thanks for having us. From my side, I've been wearing First Light since you came out 2007, correct? Yeah, ish That's right. And I probably had more time in your guys' product than any other, and it definitely is legit. See, well, I, have thanks. To, I have to give a shout out to the socks. Right. And yes. I and everyone that knows me knows that I love the socks because if I see somebody else wearing the socks, right. we have to take a picture of both of us, our legs with the socks. <laughs> and I've done this in airports it's and like, cause, yeah. it's cause scenes, honestly. But um, those compression socks I'm a big fan. are That's all I so wear. awesome. Yeah. I mean, I wear them, I wear them to work. I, I wear them all the time because they keep me warm. They, they fit so good. So even though they're the men's, I'm right. sure, they – they don't fit him, so I was really excited that I got all of his, too. So Yeah, fat cast. I had to give a shout-out to those. Those were my favorite. If I was to pick a favorite, it'd be a tie now between the arrow wool and that seek jacket. That arrow wool changed the game. You know, the arrow wool, I'm going to tell you, at Outdoor Retailer, it's the nicest wool in that building. Like, And for us, that I, I love that because, you know, everybody says, oh, the, 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 the hunting industry is just kind of, you know, following behind the outdoor industry. That is is the nicest the arrow wool is the, is the nicest would be the nicest wool in the building there as would our insulation the the 37.5 treated insulation is the highest level of of insulation and it's cool like you know everything else um of course we try our hardest we get made in the very best factories you know but i'm not going to say it's better you know vastly better it's you know we we do the best we can with the best materials, you know, with, we try to get, you know, increase it incrementally, but literally those kind of two things, they are better, markably, than, than, than everything else out there. All right, guys, I appreciate it. I think the dog's about to poop, so we're going <laughs> to <Uh-oh>. sign off. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Kenneth. Thanks, Thanks a bunch. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks.